let's talk a little bit about some of the beings that we connect with that we've been working with. So we're talking about that we are having telepathic communication. We're talking about, you know, people that are channeling beings, people that are transcribing or having messages with different races, like the Aldebarians, like the Tigetans, like all of these different races, right? And how do we differentiate who's in alignment with us? How do we differentiate who these beings even are? And one of the things that we're just going to talk about today is more on the elemental, the angelic realms and the devas. And what are they really? How do they influence our life? How can we actually work together with them? And more specifically, when we work together with them, that we're working together with them as co-creative energy in the universe, but that we want to make sure that we're never giving our power away. We want to make sure that we're never worshiping these beings. We want to make sure that we're never um, expending our energy out to them in a way that makes us feel as though they're higher than us or more sacred than us or anything better than us in any way, shape or form, because they are not, they are just a different form of creator God source energy that we're probably existing within many of these realms in some of these forms simultaneously. So I'm actually going to pull this. This is actually from Wikipedia, very simple, but I wanted to pull up Deva's just so you can hear it from multiple different perspectives on the planet so this would be more from the hindu the buddhist kind of perspective knowing that buddhism actually is a derivative of hinduism so hindu is kind of the easier to just kind of go back to but that the devas are heavenly divine beings they are anything of excellence and it is also one of the terms for a deity so what one might call a god, a deva or a devi um, is how they would either say masculine or feminine. But basically within the earliest Vedic literature that these are the all supernatural beings. So the concepts and legends evolve in ancient Indian literature that they are also benevolent as well as not benevolent devas because they are also just different levels of consciousness much just on another plane of existence so kind of like you can't come to earth and say earth humans are all one way or all another way we want to make sure that we know the angels the devas the elementals are all having different expressions of consciousness and we want to be aware when we work with them what these levels of consciousness are so here's just kind of a list of some of the names that you would think of devas like Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Ganesh, Hanuman, and the list goes kind of on and on and on that within Hinduism and a lot of these other practices, there's hundreds of them, right? Because they exist in other multidimensional realms and frequencies, but they are interacting and interplaying right within our reality here. So you can see how humanity has actually deified many of these beings when in truth they shouldn't be. They are just other aspects of consciousness and we don't ever want to give away our power to any of these beings because we have the same capabilities should we learn to rise our consciousness through the veils and above any of these lower forms. So within this, this is a, a, a beautiful quote that's going to lead into some of the information and in how the angelics, the Elohim, and the Seraphim are working with this and how they are holding the light rays and frequencies within our body. So let's start to kind of think of these beings more as spinning wheels of light. And when we imagine looking at our cellular body under a microscope that we realize that when we get down, down, down into the molecular structure of how we are composed, that we are just lights blinking in and out of existence, that we are all just trillions of cells that are blinking in and out, in and out, all of our electrons in and out, in and out. So we're not solid. We are light 
bodies. We are light beings. And if we got to this understanding that the light is blinking on and off right inside of us, it is there where these angelics are truly having some of the most influence on us. When you're asking for upgrades or you're getting downloads or they're working with your DNA, they're, lo they're working with us on that microscopic level, right within the in and the blinking on and off. And imagine when they are resetting our patterns within us, that they're changing the lights blinking on and off patterns. That's how the morphogenetic patterns change. As they blink on and off, they look solid, no different than your TV looks like a solid picture on there, but it's really pixels. You are the exact same thing. And when your sequence is off, then we are living in dead light energy. We start to deteriorate or we have implants within us or lower vibrations. But as these angelics, like the orifim, like some of the seraphim, the fiery wheels of light come in and assist us when we ask them what they're actually assisting us with is upgrading our light codes in our body so that our sequences start to flash on and off back again in the right patterning so that it's in harmony with divine light and divine right order. So this is actually a quote from C.W. Leadbeater, who is one of the beings that brought a lot of the theosophical information forward. But I will tell you, there is a lot of powerful information within the theosophical teachings. And when you can read them with discernment, it's so powerful to be able to pull out the nuggets in there because they really brought through some powerful information. So specific elementals are responsible for the well-being of your body. They transform the energy from nature and from our higher bodies to make them suitable for the etheric and therefore the physical body. So that's powerful. Remember, our light body, the morphogenetic fields in our light body, and what we hold in there, so in our patterning, is actually what's creating our physical reality and what we're experiencing in our physical body. So I would invite you to go back to the video uh, on manifesting with water. And I can add that into our recap for this week. But the video on manifesting with water, we talked a lot about how things will show up in our energy bodies and our light bodies, whether it's disease, whether it's discord, whether it's shadow, whether it's whatever. And it actually starts out here. And the more we don't do anything with it, it gets and seeps in until it physically manifests within our body. So this is super powerful for us to keep remembering. You want to create the health. We create the healthy pattern within our light bodies and it starts to transform our physical reality so therefore in this way this is keeping the energy levels up for every cell and organ in the body this helps your body to function properly in the physical realm in your everyday life so you may fulfill a greater life purpose in the outer world so the elementals so we're talking about the elemental beings the lights the the different consciousness levels of the astral realm is instrumental in aiding in any self-healing process and it knows the blueprint of your atomic molecular structure right down to the dna rna cellular level the elemental can assist you in releasing trauma and memory stored and held in your body they are able to retrieve the information and release the know-how of how to best facilitate self-healing or healing for others you can connect with elementals through meditation or in a healing session. Elementals will help in the healing process and in keeping the body healthy and much more. As with all elementals or nature spirits, an attitude of loving respect is needed by you. Elementals support the body from the ground upwards, solidly grounding the body and connecting up the spine to the head. So this is so powerful for us to begin to start to acknowledge actual energy that's not only within our body, but that's available to us. I'm going to show you some other quotes from other resources and how it's available all around us if we learn to start tapping into it. So again, having that experience of 
uh, hearing the story about the Grand Canyon. And uh, yeah, exactly. The, uh, the Grand Canyon uh, that's popping up in the chat too. A thank you to Becky. So that is a great reminder of how we're tapping into not only the elemental energy, that when we tap in with Earth Mother, with Tara, with Gaia, these are also the levels of consciousness that we're tapping into. So with this, I want to touch on the Essene gospel. Now, the Essenes are part of the 12 angelic tribes, and they are one of the seed races that were holding the Christos mission and working with the Orifem, Orifem, and the Emerald Order. So they were one of the record keepers that were holding the sacred information on the planet, and that is most specifically why you can see they went through what they went through. They were um, definitely uh, had to hide a lot of the information because it was part of the sacred teachings. There are these books, they're called the Essene Gospels of Peace, and I'm just going to do a tiny, these are excerpts from in there. Um, the first one specifically, honestly, if you want a different perspective on water fasting, fasting, or allowing the body to be more healthy, uh, it's a it's a pretty interesting read in, in really creating and dispelling what is called... Um, I forget the term they use in there, but it's basically dispelling the devil, which is sickness in the body is really what they're referring to. So let's talk a little bit about how within the Essene gospel, do they talk about angels? Do they talk about the beings that are assisting us? So when we look at this, it says your mother is in you. And when they say the mother, they're talking about the earth. Your mother is in you and you in her. She bore you. She gives you life. It was she who gave you your body and her you shall return to one day and return it. So now when we start to talk about the body of mother, we're realizing that there are many angels right within the body of mother. And it talks about that the blood that runs within you is born of the blood of your earthly mother. So this is within your blood. She is flowing through you. The air which you breathe is born of the breath of the earthly mother. And the hardness of our bones is born, born of the bones of the earthly mother, which is the minerals and the rocks. And I'll read this here. But in the erring son of man, be sorry for his sins and undo them and return again to the earthly mother. So it's saying really when we start to forget being connected to earth mother, we truly start to live in this idea of sin. That sin isn't something that the Bible kind of created as, but that sin is a state of being, if you want to look at it this way, which is more of a separation. It's a disconnect. And when we live within that, our body deteriorates. We step out of living light energy. So I'm just translating the words that they're saying. You can use whatever words you want in discernment. But the whole idea is that when we return again to the earthly mother, that when we do this, that we return to mother's laws, so the laws of nature, and free ourselves from Satan's clutches. When we resist these temptations, the earthly mother will receive us back again with love and send the angels, her angels, to assist us in order that we may heal our body. So what angels is she talking about? They say, renew yourself and fast. That, and again, I want to use, they're using the word Satan, but in this terminology, Satan is actually disease within the body. And they actually, when you read the Essene uh, books, they're referring to Satan as actual parasites and like bacteria in the body. So the stuff that is completely creating ill health within our body. So it says that this plagues, um, are really necessary to clear out through fasting and prayer. 
utilize within you the fresh air. Seek the fresh air of the forest and the fields, and there in the midst of them you will find the angel of air. After the angel of air, seek the angel of water. And afterwards there remain within you and seek the angel of sunlight. So the reason why I wanted to actually bring this through is to give you another perspective that when you're breathing the air that you're breathing, we don't really think that we're breathing divine beings or angels or consciousness. We just think we're breathing. We don't even probably think about breathing, but we're breathing in the Holy Spirit. We're breathing in the living breath. We're breathing in consciousness. So when we can start to live at such a divine level that we become so attuned that everything is sacred, everything is a prayer, everything is an intimate connection with the cosmos, with the divine mother Sophia, with all of the angelics and all of the devas and all of the realms, we would start to realize that just as the air is just of a different form of crystal and crystalline form, that as we breathe it in, we're actually breathing consciousness. As we feel the sun rays on our face, that it's the angels of sunlight that are actually bringing this light to us. And you can also remember that this light is coming to us through the solar logos, which is a huge solar body consciousness. It is a different being our sun is a conscious being that is emanating rays and we are part of this being we are part of all of these bodies that we are and as you drink water water again is another form of crystal i'm going to actually tell you there's a powerful book in the books and resources section and i will have to put it in the links because i don't keep a ton of this right in my head <laughs> um it breaks down on a molecular level that most every single element on the planet has a connection back to being a crystalline form. So when we can really feel that connection and energy, we remember that our light blinking in and out is that eminescent and light from our plasma body. And that liquid plasma body is initial stages was coming into a crystallized form. So as we move with that, this is going to be my recommendation for you guys for this, for if you choose to read another book or some information. But this is a book called Downloads from the Nine. And in it, it is all about the nine devas is what it's called. But the nine devas are really just devas from the ninth dimension. And that they are known as crystalline atomic fire or seraphim. Now, this up here on the top is Seraphim. This is coming from the Ascension Glossary. And that the Seraphim lineage, so re remember when we were talking about our three founder rays, the 12th ray of Aramatena being the Orophi Orophim, the 11th ray being the Seraphi Seraphim, and the 10th ray being the Braharama. So we have the seraphim lineages, which are part of the original founder, founder primal sound uh, fields of the gold order ray, which encompasses the seraph lineage. It could also be called the winged ones. So I pulled up on just on a Google search seraphim. And it's really amazing. You can see that people start to try to translate them into an angelic form. Because remember, the Seraphi Seraphim in our founder rays started to become the avian form, the bird form, the winged form. But in the original high dimensional vibrational beings, they have multiple wings. They are spinning wheels of light, many of them. And so they look like buzzing just winged flying light. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. In the high vibrational fields, it's just 
light that when you get really microscopic and clear on it, it does seem like it has wheels or wings, sorry. Um, and you can see on the cover of this book is a great demonstration that it's actually more like plasma bodies and lights that look winged. So these are the angelic seraphim and they're an extension of the family entity of Ra in the 14th dimension from the next universe. So we're talking the Andromedan universe through right nope, right there, the Andromedan galaxy and the seven higher heavens, which live within the practices of the law of one. So remember, there's been distortions in our universe with reversal systems all the way up into the 11th dimension, which is the Seraphim. The Seraphim is one of the most distorted lineages. I would say it has been, but I think it is really a massive correction has been happening with it. And it's part of the lineages we have come to be a part of, to heal and connect with. But so this is where discernment comes in. This is where archangels have been really used in lines of deception because there has been a lot of reversal within the angelic realms, the fallen angels, if you want to look at it that way. And so when we start to allow our discernment to come in now, how do we tap into this energy so that it can benefit us so that we can start to connect with it, honor it? give thanks that we don't have to be separate through the multi-dimensions anymore, but we can connect with these beings. I highly recommend this book, the downloads from the nine. It's one of those you're going to need a way to be able to read it because the Seraphim lineage actually shared information in here that is helping to rewire the different DNA within your body. It's helping to restructure it and have it in a way that's easier um, for you to repattern the light codes within your body. So what I want to just kind of put in here is they are a crystalline fire, which will stimulate the myelin and help to thicken it and help to advance the body to be able to hold higher light codes within it. The Davis are transparent fire and are responsible for many of the changes that have been set into place. They are transparent, ultra bright atomic fire. And at a cellular level, the light is processed by the potential energy until it penetrates right where it's needed to be on an intercellular level and allowing you to realign yourself. So as you read the book, if you didn't know the biology of your body, you're going to by the end of it, because it talks about all of the different um uh, all of the different amino acids within your bodies, the hormones within your bodies and realigning all of these different structures within our body down to these building block levels that that's the level that they're really working with us on. So I just wanted to share a little bit about this, that they really what they're doing is helping to inject a luminous beam within our body that elevates us in order to handle higher light codes of energy and again, realign our blinking in and out codes so that we can reattune ourselves back into the original founder blueprints and the morphogenetic patterns that create living light energy back within us again. So basically the living form. So with that, just kind of to wrap some of this up, um, I just share all of this as just a way for you to have information, tools at your ready so that when you are traveling the astral realms, when you are traveling in your dreams, when you are connecting with interdimensional beings and the multiverse, that we have our own inner compass and our own inner guidance to go with. There isn't a level of confusion anymore because now we know that, hey, sometimes deception is really beautiful and pretty and shiny, and it seems really cool, and it says loving things, but then when we ask it to show its true form three times, we can see true, truly, truly, truly what is there communicating and connecting with us, and to know that any beings truly within alignment within God, source, light. So I will tell you, and it's... I'm going to say I was really stoked that uh, 
Kimberly actually brought up the Arcturians because we've been working a lot with them together as a group lately. They've been really forward with us. And I will ask them to show themselves multiple times. And many times they will actually bring themselves within a form I can relate with. But it is true. When you ask them to show their form, they more than likely are a, just a blue ball of light and she brought that up within the talk that she was talking about i actually wrote it down in here that the arcturians uh she said they're lovely healers um but that they've been really working on the planet to help increase frequencies on the planet which uh, again it's just all confirmation for what we've been doing but that when they show themselves they basically many times if you ask them to show their true form that they're going to be just a beautiful luminescent blue plasma light or blue blue ball of light, a blue field of light. So when we are dealing with benevolent beings, beings who are choosing living light energy, beings that are on the path of restoring the body of the universe and har harmony within the universe, and those that are heart-centered have a living law kind of creed within themselves of transparency there is no deception deception is not it's not part of that reality so just know that they will always immediately show themselves in their true form should you ask there's always going to be transparency truth that level within there and you can ask 20 times it doesn't matter they're going to continually show themselves as they are because they are coming through with truth with love with an alignment with what we are choosing now the beings that are not choosing and i've had this happen lots of times i'm going to tell you it does really work there will be beings and they will be in the room and i will ask them to show their true form and the form morphs just like that right before my inner eye if you will it just morphs and you get to see the true form and therefore there's no fear there's no worry there's no anything because again when you know who you are there's nothing to be afraid of because you're holding the christ light therefore when you hold yourself in solidarity they have nothing to attack you with if you get afraid they can go all over you all day long yes fear is a doorway in it's an invitation for attack when we know who we are and we hold ourselves solid they have nowhere to go they can't they can't the christ light is too strong so hold that within them and when you know who they are therefore you immediately have the upper hand and don't go it alone you don't have to be alone connect with your founding flames connect with your guardians connect with many of these beings that are the orophium the seraphim connect with the emerald order connect with the beings that you are working with and know who they are so that you have a relationship already and you can work together as a team because that's really what we are we're a team and we're working together and therefore many times when i do come across a being who's been cloaking and they uncloak i will immediately call the guardians i will immediately call the entire council and all of a sudden <laughs> they're they're not so big anymore because they really realize oh crap you know this is either they're going to have to leave or they're going to get returned back to god source light so most of them will choose to leave um that is changing a lot more i do find a lot more that are choosing to go back to god source light so with that